Has anybody in the audience in their lifetime had surgery? Have they had a baby or a C-section? Put up your hands. Almost everybody. Well, now imagine that you had no sterile instruments while you were having the surgery or having your baby or the C-section. Or imagine that no surgery at all was available. What would that mean for your life? And then imagine a world where a magician with a stroke of his magic wand creates a sterilizer that can create and provide for sterile instruments, completely sterile, for anybody, anywhere in the world, at any time. What would that mean? So this story is about the Anywhere Sterilizer. It begins with someone who looks a little bit like me, and my father. My father was a very stern man. He demanded excellence. He supported curiosity, and he gave me the immense privilege of going to the first progressive school in the United States, where we didn't have textbooks or homework, but we did learn how to think and to solve problems and to maintain a sort of subversive, curious nature. That was what my father gave me. And so, of course, I went off to medical school. And in medical school, I thought, now I can really serve the public good like my father wanted me to do. So I was a very good boy, and I learned how to be a doctor. Doctors are taught to do things our way. This is the way we do things. We do things using best practices, and the outcomes are described in the literature and in the textbook. Very good. I began to think at that point in time that maybe the habit that I was learning would be a barrier to the new or an obstacle to innovation. Just sort of lurked in the back of my head. And while I was in medical school, I traveled extensively, every chance I got. I went for two summers to the Andes of Peru and worked with a surgeon. My senior year, I ran a 100-bed surgical service in a missionary hospital in central India. And there, it became abundantly clear to me there was a huge chasm, huge, between the best practices of modern medical technology from New York Hospital at Cornell in New York, and in Bareilly, India, where there was no IV fluids, no blood bank, no laboratory, very seldom was there electricity. How in the world were you going to be able to take care of people using this best practices? So it became clear to me that we needed a little innovation, a little magic, a little out-of-the-box thinking, and so, this is what came out of all that. So essential surgery is a very, very big problem. It affects billions of people. The numbers are so big that we get completely overwhelmed. We feel impotent. So I'm not going to give you big numbers. I'm going to tell you just a few stories. So I want you to meet this lovely, lovely woman from Afghanistan who's just delivered a beautiful baby, which is being admired by the baby's grandmother. This woman had obstructed labor, which meant that the baby's head got stuck, and she had an emergency C-section. And she's now in the recovery room. And if you look at the recovery room, you can see it's pretty sparse. Probably no sterility. Nine days later, May 20th, 2007, just a few years ago, there's Our Lady Kamar, wrapped up in white linen, as cold as the clay, with her grieving husband. Shocking, tragic, unnecessary. And now let's go south to the Indian Ocean, the Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. And here are three women who had the same problem as Kamar obstructed labor, only they were in a part of the world, no electricity, no surgery, no C-section. Baby's head gets stuck, makes a hole in the bladder, so urine runs into the vagina, it's called a fistula, and they're doomed for the rest of their life to live as you see them, with a plastic tube in their bladder running into green plastic buckets. Shocking, tragic, completely preventable. Unless you think that this is unusual, 
There are over 3 million people in the world today, women, who live with fistulas. There are 100,000 new fistulas a year, and 5% of all women who are pregnant in the developing world develop obstructed labor. So why is it, why is it that we can't solve this problem? What is the reason? So we looked into that. Louis Pasteur, the pastor of pasteurized milk and pasteurized cheese, discovered in 1880 that boiling water does not sterilize. It doesn't work. So he invented this. It's called the autoclave. It's like your grandmother's pressure cooker, superheated steam. And that sterilizes. 1880. Africa, sub-Saharan Africa, 2014. 1880, 2014. The sharp eyes will see that there's an electric wire coming out of this autoclave. But where is it supposed to plug into? When 90% of the places where you might find it, they either have no electricity or it's intermittent. So this clearly is not a good solution. So what is the solution? What's used today is pre-Louis Pasteur, boiling water. It doesn't work, but it's being used and I'll show you where it's being used a little later on. So now you say to yourself, but Dr. Bernstein, this is ridiculous. We go to our hospital, we get sterile instruments, they have autoclaves. What are you talking about? Well, what I'm talking about is this. This is a modern autoclave. It's very big, it's very expensive, it uses a lot of electricity, it requires demineralized water, and it requires a very complicated maintenance program. So when it's used in sub-Saharan Africa, it looks like that. It's broken. Maintenance is totally intimidating, it doesn't work, it's not satisfactory. And the lesson from all of this is that the advances in technology that have happened as part of the best practices, the medical school that I went to, the universities that I did my residency in, have developed technologies which are wholly inappropriate for 90% of the world where people live in low resource settings. So we came up with something else. It's called the Anywhere portable sterilizer. And that's the magic. So now I'm going to tell you about the magic trick. So we took something which is the scourge of mankind, smog. And an ingredient in smog is nitrogen dioxide. And nitrogen dioxide is what brought down the CEO of Volkswagen this week. <laughs> it's a scourge. It's a scourge all over the place. It happens that this molecule Nitrogen dioxide is a powerful sterilant. It kills bacteria, it kills viruses, it kills spores. It's inexpensive. It operates at room temperature. And it can sterilize plastics, adhesives, electronics, my iPhone, your Apple Watch, whatever you like, it can sterilize it. It's very different from an autoclave, and it's very low cost, and it's portable. So let me show you now how it works. It won't take long because it's very simple. So here's the sterilizer. It's a simple, strong case. You can drive your car over it. You open it up, just like that, and inside you put surgical instruments. And I'm sure you can all see these instruments. You put them in the case, and here's where it gets really difficult. You close the case. Okay, very difficult. You then remove this, and now, since I build myself as an amateur musician, instead of pulling it out of my sleeve, I'll take it out of my vest pocket. This is a nitrogen dioxide gas generating capsule. It goes into the box like that. We put this, it's talking to me, saying thank you, and you turn that until it punctures the cartridge, it releases the gas. Several hours later, the timer says it's done. You open it up, and everything in it is sterile. That's the magic trick. That is a sterilizer that ster <laughs> This is a sterilizer that sterilizes without electricity, without heat, and without water and it's very inexpensive. So let me bring you now back to the harsh, cold reality of the world that this is built for. 
This is a health center in northern Rwanda near the Ugandan border that we visited two years ago while we were doing voice of the customer studies. And you will notice that there is a lovely woman squatting, talking to a child. That's my co-founder of Anywhere, Hama Malik, who knows very well that if you're going to be providing service to customers, you better talk to them and know who you are dealing with. So we have spent two years talking to our potential customers so that this sterilizer is useful. The lady who runs this center, this is what she sees every day. Lots and lots of women, lots of deliveries, lots of children, lots of trauma. And now those of you who have had a child, imagine that you had your child in this delivery room with no electricity at all. And so if you went there at night, there are two kerosene lanterns so that the midwife maybe can see what she's doing. And oh yes, you're familiar with the boiling water in the corner that does not sterilize. We knew that in the early 1800s, but it's still being used today. And here is Musa Garetti. This is the nurse, totally committed, totally competent, totally dedicated, who runs this health center. And we went there and we showed her a prototype of this sterilizer. She looked at it carefully, she opened it up, fiddled with it, and then she turned to me and she said, Dr. Bernstein, go away. Leave right now. Go away. It's very shocking. And I, being me, I said, why? Why? I thought maybe I made some big blunder. And she said, Dr. Bernstein, we need this sterilizer so badly that we can't afford to have you stand here for one more minute and talk to us. <laughs> you go away now. And do not come back until you can bring me a sterilizer. That was two years ago. I'm very happy to say that this year, very soon, we're going to go back and we're going to give all the Musa Garetis that we've met all over East Africa what they want, which is a sterilizer. Now, what I'd like to do in closing is sort of change the subject just for a minute. And I hope that all of you will take the profound lesson that derives from the Anywhere journey to recognize that it's people who are committed, who have the courage to follow their heart and their calling, who get together and have the courage to innovate, have the courage to ask why not, to stick with it over and over and over again, you can actually come up with a solution just like this sterilizer to a problem that has been insoluble up until the present time that has now been solved by such a team, our team, and anywhere, and will make essential surgery possible for everybody in the world anywhere. Thank you.